welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another edition of Foodie Fridays. Now this Friday I have a recipe from our good old Paula Dean. So I am not taking credit for this recipe at all. The link in the description box will be there for you to go to a Food Network site to go and print out her recipe. We have made this so many times I can't even count on fingers guys. I printed this out back in 2007 as I'm looking at the recipe card from online and it's been a while <laughs> um, but it is a great recipe I've made it so many times and if you're thinking barbecue meatloaf wow that sounds kind of weird it's not what you think it's just instead of your traditional ketchup tomato topping like most people do for a traditional meatloaf this has more of a tangy topping which I really really enjoy and our family really loves so the ingredients that you're gonna need are one and a half pounds of ground meat. I actually use two pounds of ground meat because I don't like, um, when you buy the ground meat, it's usually like a pound increment. So I don't like freezing a half pound. So I just use two pounds and it's always worked out great. So if you are like me and you don't want to freeze anything with your measurements from buying at the store, you can do that. You need a cup of breadcrumbs, which I have there, the Progresso. You need one onion diced. And I try to dice mine as fine as possible because I know the hubby doesn't like chunks in his meatloaf. So it will cook down and they'll be kind of translucent so you won't have that chunkiness from the onion. If you're not an onion lover, I know some of y'all don't like it. You can substitute it with onion powder, I'm sure, and it would be fine. You need one egg, and I've already light, lightly beaten it. One and a half teaspoons of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. You need two eight ounce cans of tomato sauce. I went ahead and got the kind with no salt added. I like to get that in vegetables or whatever because you can add your own ingredients instead of all that sodium that's in the can. Three tablespoons of vinegar, three tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, and any water to thin the sauce or the topping, which I've never done. I never use any water to thin the topping. So when you see that on the recipe, I've never done that before. You're gonna wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and we're going to mix this together. I'm gonna to show you how to mix it up, how to put it in your nine by 13 pan, pop that bad boy in the oven, and you're gonna cook it for about an hour, and it will be so delicious. I like to serve mine with mashed potatoes, peas, and rolls, traditional meatloaf sides, and we just love it. So let's get on to mixing this bad boy up. All right, y'all, so the first thing you're gonna to want to do is get your actual meat mixture mixed up first before you make any of your toppings for this meatloaf. So the first thing we're going to add is our one cup of fresh breadcrumbs. I always use the Progresso kind or whatever kind in the box, but the recipe calls for fresh, but I never use fresh and it comes out just fine. You need all the onions, so I'm gonna put the onion in there. I've already pre diced my onion to make it nice and easy to just throw in there. You're going to need your lightly beaten egg and go ahead and put that in there too and that's just going to bind the meatloaf and keep everything intact so it doesn't fall apart while it is cooking in the oven. And you're going to need your salt and pepper. So for your salt you need one and a half teaspoons of salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there. And you can add less if you want, more if you want. I mean, it looks like a lot of salt, but it doesn't taste salty to me. But if you're not a salt lover, just cut back on that. And then as far as the pepper goes, you need half a teaspoon of pepper. You can always add more or less of this as well. So there is my pepper. And that's everything for the actual um, meat mixture, except for you're going to want to take your tomato sauce. Now y'all saw we had two cans of the eight ounce tomato sauces earlier. You're going to actually save some of the tomato sauce for the topping. So you're going to take one of those cans that's open and you're going to measure out half a cup and put that into your meat mixture. So as you can see, there will still be some tomato sauce left in there that you're going to use along with that other can for your topping. So again, this is just gonna make the meat mixture moist. It's gonna be so, so yummy. So we're gonna mix this right, up So I've went ahead and mixed the mixture. I didn't want to film that because it just looks gross and a hot mess. And don't you just hate when you have to make meatloaf and all the meat gets stuck under your fingernails? That's the one thing I hate about making meatloaf is that it's just so nasty feeling and gross. So we're gonna take our meat mixture now and we're gonna put it in our nine by 13 pan and you wanna form it into a loaf mixture. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. All right, so you're wanna gonna take your mixture and you want it to be in a loaf, but you don't want it to be too fat, if you will, because then it will not cook in the one hour time frame that you have going on. So I just like to 
push mine down with my hand to kind of flatten it and then I shape it around like a loaf with my fingers and you want to make sure that it's all like intact like the onions if you're using onions because you just want it to look nice when it gets done cooking and as you can see it's gonna get bigger as you spread it out this will uh, if you have a small family it's just me my husband and Waylon will probably eat this Trey will not eat this <laughs> and my mother-in-law comes over for dinner usually every time I cook and it will feed us two nights because that's how much it makes because I like to slice mine into slices when it gets done cooking and it's just perfect portions because we usually only eat like a piece and a half each because it gets to be pretty thick pieces as you can see as I'm building this thing up so I'm trying to get it to where y'all can see it but again it's just a loaf if you want to just shape it into the 9 by 13 pan I mean you can do that too and cut it into squares that's totally up to you but this is just how I like to do it so and I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to getting it the way that I want it all right, so I think that looks good as far as how I want the loaf mixture to look. Now we're going to make the topping for this next. All right, for this topping, you're gonna to take the rest of your tomato sauce, so that one eight ounce can that we opened but we did not use, and that other eight ounce can that we did open and use for the mixture, we're gonna use the rest of it, and go ahead and pour it into our bowl. This is going to be our tangy, she says barbecue sauce. Doesn't taste like barbecue to me. It just has like a tangy flavor. And maybe that's why she calls it barbecue. I don't know. But it's just really good. All right. So there are the rest of our tomato sauces. The next ingredient we're going to put in is going to be vinegar. And you're going to need three tablespoons of vinegar. One two three all right so we got our vinegar in there next thing you're going to put I'm gonna go ahead and put my Worcestershire and my Dijon mustard I'm gonna do my sugar last because I don't want to put that liquid into my sugar bag so I'm gonna do the Worcestershire sauce next and you need two tablespoons of it let me shake it real good in the bottle all right so and it says two tablespoons and I have a ton this bottles full so I need to probably just open it so I'm gonna put that guy in there <laughs> and just open it because if not y'all will be here five minutes trying to get this out of the bottle there we go all right one two all right so Worcestershire sauce is in now I'm going to put my Dijon mustard in and again, all these flavors just really marry well together and give it that nice tang. Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And it can be a little bit more, guys. It doesn't have to be precise for this. One. Two. Do y'all always have to count when you're doing these kind of things? Because if not, I will screw it up and I will put way more or way less. I've done it before, especially when baking. All right, and then I'm going to put my sugar in there. And you need three tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm going to wash my measuring spoon and I'm going to put that in next. All right, one tablespoon of brown sugar going in. And you want to pack it down in the actual tablespoon. Two and three. Light brown sugar. If you only have dark, that would probably work too very versatile recipe and now you're going to take a whisk and you're going to whisk all these ingredients together this topping is what makes the meatloaf guys right here this is the gold without this it would just be a generic meatloaf I think so you're gonna want to whisk that real good make sure all that brown sugar gets incorporated the Dijon mustard scrape it all. I like to whisk mine really, really good so all the flavors have married together. Nothing's like stuck at the bottom. You know how that happens sometimes? Alright, so now that is good to go and now we're going to put it on top of our meatloaf. Alright, so you're going to go ahead and take your topping and you're going to just pour it all over your meatloaf. 
and you want to cover as much of it as possible so you're not leaving any of the meat mixture exposed without some of the liquid on it. So as you can see, it's kind of thick, guys, but once it starts cooking, it will thin itself out. So that's why I don't like to add the water like she suggests to do if it looks too thick because this will get thin once it heats up. So don't worry if you think it's too thick and you're not going to like it. Promise me. I promise you it will get thin and it will act as a glaze. It will get glazed over and it's just really, really scrumptious. Okay, so all of my meatloaf has liquid on top of it, so that looks good to me. And you're gonna put it in your oven that's preheated to 350 degrees for one hour. Um, and it says to baste every 15 minutes. I find you don't have to do that because it is thick. You can just let it do its thing and let it glaze over. If you wanna baste it every 15 minutes, you can. I think it's an unnecessary step, but that's just my opinion. Do what you want to do. And when you take it out after an hour, make sure you check, cut into it and make sure it is done. It might need, depending on your oven, it might take a little bit more than an hour at 350. It just depends on your cooking device. And when you take it out, I like to cut it into slices. Like I said, cut it into slices. I'll show you that when it gets done. And then we serve it with mashed potatoes, peas, and rolls. Super, super yummy. She also suggests on her recipe to make it as a sandwich with mayonnaise. Yum. Y'all know she does everything like so unhealthy, but it's so, so good. And like I talked in my live video, you can say what you want about good old Paula Dean, but the girl can freaking cook. So that's why I have a ton of recipes in my arsenal from her. And I wanted to bust this one out because it is a good one. So I'm going to put this in the oven, cook this bad boy. We'll come back and we'll slice it and plate it up. All right. So I just took the meatloaf out of the oven. The grease that is made and we kind of use it as gravy. We kind of stir it up with the topping um, will be more or less depending on what type of ground meat that you use. So just keep that in mind too. So if you're using a leaner cut of ground meat, you won't have as much of this grease or oil here um, as you see in mine because I use just regular ground meat for mine because I think it is more moist. <laughs> yep, afternoon, ready for dinner. All right, so we're going to cut this up and plate it. All right, y'all, so this is the final product. This is the meatloaf all plated. Like I said before, we like to eat ours with mashed potatoes and peas. These are the rolls that I just hauled at Dollar Tree, if you watched my Dollar Tree haul yesterday. And we're going to eat those with the meatloaf. And like I said, the recipe will be in the description box down below. It is her recipe. Like I said, I do not take credit for this at all. So go over to that website and go and print it out and make it for yourself. And come back and let me know how you liked it. I like when y'all come back and let me know how you liked the recipes give this video a thumbs up if you are loving the foodie fridays and hit that subscribe button if you're not with me already because i'd love to have you a part of the family here and until next friday with another foodie fridays y'all have a great day and a great afternoon bye